What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another quick tip. <laughs> I am now on number four intro shot of the day, so if they get a little goofier in the next week or two, you'll know why. But today is quick tip 18 on fire via the airbrush. So not much to say except for that you're about to see how I paint fire using an airbrush. I don't really have much more to cover. You will see it in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and just digress to past me because this was shot over a year and a half ago. It lived in exclusivity on my Patreon. Um, I have an archive of, well, I'm up to about 95 tutorials as of this is March 1st of 2022. So Check it out if you're interested. I have links down below for all of my content, including my Patreon, which is very much focused on teaching painting. Uh, you'll see me out on the road teaching at various conventions, etc. And I'll leave links to everything down below. Enjoy the tutorial and come back next week when we paint more fire, but with a brush. Enjoy, gang. Take care. I'll see you soon. Quick tip 18. Welcome to December. We're doing airbrushing fire today. I'm going to start out with some P3 heart stone. This is a very orange yellow. It's not pure yellow. You can use something like Averlane Sunset from G-Dub's line. And I'm just going to do it really quick here. Speed up the video because we've all done a base coat before. This isn't about base coating. Just make sure you get a nice opaque and even tone across the whole piece. This is going to set the tone for every step forward, okay? I like using this tone because it's just a great base to combo light or darks. Next, I'm going to go to straight pure yellow here. I'm using golden yellow from Pro Acryl. You can use whatever pure yellow there is, flash gets, whatever. But notice I'm spraying across the model. I'm using the ridges to kind of have that Everland Sunset slash Heartstone, that very orangey yellow shine through, but the highlights are getting hit on the very crispy edges. And I'm staying towards the center here. We're going to basically, with fire, you've got to build up from the center where's the warmest part of the flame. Flame goes from dark, kind of like a blackish red, to white where it's the hottest, the red being the coldest. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and emulate here. Now I'm sticking towards the center, maybe like a nickel sized portion of the miniature. And you can see, I can still see that orangey yellow towards the outside. Now that sets the stage for the following steps here. I'm gonna reach towards transparent orange. I like transparent because I can still see the influence of the colors beneath. You're more than welcome to use an opaque color. I would go with a pure orange. I'm going with the transparent, and this time I'm going to turn the brush out towards the outer edge here, and I'm going to focus on a halo kind of in the middle of the, the piece here, spraying out towards the edges. Again, I'm spraying at a side angle, so I hit those peaks. It's important to allow yourself to kind of have those yellows that you've built up shine through in the recesses. Keep in mind those recesses are closer to the center of the flame. The outer edges, or in this case the, the model's kind of edges per se, are further from the hottest portion of the flame, so they're getting warmer in color. Essentially, the closer you get to red, the cooler the flame is, right? So this gives you a good effect. You manipulate the, the miniature and spray across it. So you're highlighting, which really you're not. You're not highlighting yellow with orange. You would highlight orange with yellow. But in the case of fire, we're doing it in reverse, essentially. So I'm using my thumb here to cover up that center so I can hit some proper angles. But you can see in those deep crevices, I still see some of that really orangey yellow and the reason we start with orange yellow and go back to the bright yellow and now I'm going into the orange is it helps create a nice transition a natural fade into the fire aspect of things here so I keep spraying around and I get myself a good coverage of orange towards the outer edge you want to go into the recesses of the orange so that when you spray the next color you're seeing the orange influence in the cracks and of course as we hit the outer edge I'm going with transparent red to show the even cooler section again you can use bold pyro red 
or any pure red if you're not using transparents. I like using the transparent color. So on the right here, I've got transparent red. And you can see when it's actually used, it's more of a magenta. And then here's the opaque red, if you will, and it stays true to its color. The reason I like the transparent versus the opaque is because that orange is going to influence it to a more crimson kind of fiery red, if you will. I'm going to use that transparency to my advantage. Again, if you don't have transparent paints, that's fine. Not a big deal. You can use the inks even, but you really want to thin them down. But if you're going to be using opaque paints, thin them down considerably. We want them to have a transparent aspect to it so that we're comboing off of the color underneath it as well as allowing it to kind of feather out and transition, if you will. Fire does not have any hard edges, right? It's it, it's kind of an anomaly in, it, in itself. Like, there's no state of matter for fire, right? It's a plasma, maybe, but... It has no hard to find edge, so it very much transitions smoothly, right? So that's what the transparency of the paint is going to do for us, right? So make sure you're using very thin glazed layers, still angling that brush so that I can see those oranges that I built up underneath shining through get that kind of fiery look as you can see in this shot right here where you can clearly see all four colors coming through. So now I've got those orange transitions into the red and I've got it all the way around the model here. I've got those nice bright yellows. I've got some orange tones, but you got those ridges showing the reds. Up here, I'm going pure red all the way out because again, we're gonna combo up the next color here all these peaks see like right here i missed a spot right so i want that to be pure red because that's a higher peak it's farther away from the center it's all a stylized game you know this is an exact perfect fire airbrush fire is not going to be as nice in my opinion visually as brushed fire and i will be doing a brushed on fire next week so that'll be next week's quick type but you see i hit it and kind of War, or, well, I should say cooled down with the red, but now we got to influence the center hot spot, right? We'll get to that, but first I'm going to finish the very tips with a little bit of transparent black here, okay? You don't really see this in fire, but it's more of a stylized thing in miniature painting. You might see a little bit of this if there's like, if you're burning polystyrene or something, which you should never do, period. Um, but it'll taint the edges of the flame. So that's essentially, it, it kind of gives miniature painted flames this like stylized feel to it, right? It just gives it this extra little oomph. So we're just going to kiss the very peaks here. And notice there's a couple of peaks here. There's what, one, two, three, four, there's five peaks on this. So I'm just going to take it slow, take it very slow. You notice my trigger finger is kind of pumping back and forth, back and forth, right? I'm giving it paint. I've got the air pressure down, but every time I pump my fig finger forward, I'm turning the paint off. The air is being consistent, okay? So I'm just basically spraying very thin bursts to just kiss every edge of every peak on here. That kind of minor peak towards the top left there. I'm going to treat that as basically part of the top so i do get a little heavy-handed with the black but that's okay it's not a big deal you know fire is uh it's a very stylized approach in my opinion in miniature painting there is some realistic uh, painted fire out there but in airbrush sense it's kind of a quick pop if you will if you're doing this on a single miniature a character miniature or salamanders or you know, a fire mage, whatever you're doing it on, it's going to be in a smaller compact. It's not as big as this wall of fire spell from Reaper here. So it's going to be more of a brushed on effect. And that, again, I'll be covering in next week's quick tip. So you see this little peak? Now, I really want you guys to pay attention to my finger. See that spot of black? I'm actually aiming the needle past that little peak right there towards my finger and I'm using that cone of spray out of the airbrush right I want to hit that peak right there so I'm actually spraying in this 
kind of angular fashion, aiming at my finger and letting that overspray just barely kiss that peak, right? See my finger getting blacker? I'm actually painting my finger and relying on that very end of the cone. That's a little trick you can do for highlighting with an airbrush too. And then I just hit it with a little bit of a top down. Same situation. I'm actually, look at the cap. I'm spraying the cap, but I'm letting that overspray hit it. So just subtly doing a quick little kiss of each peak here. And I'm also going to feather it down slightly and do some of that cross path over all the ridges so that you see some of that orange, some of that red shining through. Don't be too afraid to move things around, get it manipulated, and really start influencing these black tips. Now, I've slowed it down again here because I'm very slowly and very thinly kissing a little bit of those ridges into the orange. Not much. You, you can hardly see it in the video. But I'm just barely kissing into that pure red where that red kind of transitions in, into the orange just on the peaks. So there you go. That's, for the most part, the cool tone, right? So I've got a clear-cut bright yellow, and it transitions out into that orange yellow, and so on and so forth, out into the colder tones of the fire. So now we got to bring in the hot spot, right? And I'm going to reach for some white ink, and I'm actually going to use contrast medium here, not flow improver. I like contrast medium because it's very soft. It'll transition and soften out the fade if you will i actually end up mixing this a little too thick i'm using 10 drops of contrast medium and i meant to use one drop of ink because ink is insanely pigment rich but i got a little heavy-handed and it's two drops so i'll deal with that that's not a big deal it's not going to be a severe transition but you can see it's quite quite aggressive i guess is the word i'm looking for here i would much rather it be more milky more translucent but i also kind of back it off here i do a little bit of back and forth and i'll just let you kind of watch me work here i don't need to talk for every second of the video here so now you can see i'm kind of actually moving it around manipulating it slightly because there are spots where it pulled up and I'm also letting that brush kind of wick a little bit of it back. Now here it is dry, and notice I've kind of gotten a little too intense white, right? I'm still going to do this regardless of how intense that white is, but I'm going to bring it back towards yellow. And I'm going to reach for a pale yellow. Ice yellow from Vallejo is a good color. I don't know the G-Dub equivalent, but something in the kind of pastel yellow, if you will, very desaturated yellow, right? And I've got a little bit of my glazing medium for the recipe. You can check back on a quick tip a couple of weeks back. I show you guys how I make this glazing medium. It's not just water. I mix a very, very, very dirty paint water style glaze. Knock off the extra moisture on a moist paper towel. And I'm going to glaze this up towards the yellow tones of the fire. Okay, I'm going to start towards the bottom and pull it up towards the yellow tones because I still want that intensity that white intensity at the very bottom of the flame it only makes sense to pull it up to the yellow to help create a transition from that basically somewhat white to the pastel yellow slash yellow whitish desaturated white to very bright white right so we're continuing that smooth transition and by glazing it up towards the yellow we encourage that transition and I just go back and forth a little bit here until I'm pretty happy with what it looks like. I've got a little bit of a issue with pooling there, so I just dab in a little bit. Now I've cleaned my brush, and I'm using the very side to clean off any residue of that kind of pale yellow on any of those high ridges of yellow. I still want that yellow influence in there, right? So just clean it up the best you need it, and... I don't know why I'm cleaning the sticky tack here. I had COVID and I was tired and I was just trying to get things done. So who knows what I'm doing there. But you can manipulate with a wet brush, kind of pull back some of that intensity there. And I do work with it a little off camera just to kind of clean up some of these ridges. But when that dries, it'll soften intensely and you'll see it here in a second. 
So there's the finished piece. It's a little grainy, but you can see the transitions. You can see the encouragement of the light. I just want to really stress to you all, please, please, please make sure that you pay attention to those ridges and spray across the model so you pick up those edges. You can see, if you look closely, the white transition to that bright yellow, that pure yellow, flash gets yellow, golden yellow from Pro Curl is what I used. And then you can see a transition to that orange yellow, the heart stone from P3 that I used. You could use Averland Sunset from Games Workshop. Uh, from there, obviously, you see into the oranges, the reds, and the blacks. That's the whole effect, is being able to layer those smoothly and get those ridges to show the next color up. If there's a deep valley, that valley, the peak of that valley is going to be the next coldest color. And you can transition these colors. You can do this with greens. You can do this with the red scale that I did here. You can do this with black and white. You start to, from white, you transition to, into various values of gray until you finally hit black. You can do this with purples. You can do this with any type of color scheme you want. You just start with your warm color towards the center or hottest portion of the miniature, if you will, and then towards the outside peaks, you transition to your dark color. For example, let's say I want to do a purple flame with a green hot spot. I would go from, yeah, I would do that. Mint green, like, I don't know what Pro Curl's mint green is called. Bright pale green to jade to maybe a dark blue to even a purple, a deep dark purple. That would be a really cool transition to do. So I encourage you guys to test out all the different color schemes in this manner. And stay tuned next week. I'll be doing the brush version, the traditional paintbrush version. It will give you a little bit more detail. And you can actually combo these two methods to get a really nice, quick, and easy, effective fire without spending a day or two glazing and layering so stay tuned for next week's tutorial i want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being patient with me while i was dealing with covid and really appreciate you guys being with me through december i look forward to getting into 2021 and just continuing this awesome endeavor and teaching and having a good time and getting better at painting with all you so thank you very much for being patrons take care